Good morning, uh, today is Monday the 1st of February and this is the first in what I hope will be monthly studio vlogs where I'm, I will be uploading what I've been working on and you'll get to see some of the crochet side of stuff that I don't normally share on the podcast because it's my work and therefore not really what I've been hobby crafting on uh, but yeah, during this sort of studio blog you'll be able to sort of see what I get up to so for one week of a month I'm going to be taking little bits of footage to show you what I've been working on um, I started filming on Friday and I've been this weekend mainly working on two old sweaters old, they're not that old, they're only a couple of years old sweaters that I knit uh, one was a hoodie that um, my friend Richard requested that it have a pocket added to it I did suggest that at the time but yeah, he's now decided that that's what he wants, so I went ahead and I did that. And the other one is his green cable sweater, which he's always been very happy with, but I've never been happy with how it sits on him because the neckline was too loose. So I finally got my hands on both those sweaters and I was able to um, fix them. I took the neckline off the green sweater and re-knit it, and I put that pocket on the black hoodie. So I'll put that footage in now, um, and then you can come back if you want to and um we're gonna be doing some crochet yes. Richard's sweaters back. They, I have washed and re-blocked them because they were getting a bit big. Um, and I'm going to do some modifications to them. The hoodie has been requested that it has like a kangaroo pocket added. So I'm currently knitting on that. And I want to take the neckline off the cabled sweater and um, re-knit it because it's just opened up a bit too much so I'm going to do a little bit of decreasing use a small needle and yeah just re-knit that neckline unfortunately it's been worn quite a bit so I think I might have trouble getting the neckline off you bringing that back pooks? you bringing it back? we're just playing fetch we're just playing fetch. So I'm just starting to unravel this jumper. Um, and it is really matted together here at the front of the neck, probably because Richard has a beard. Um, so yeah, this is going to be fun trying to get this neckline off. That is my task, and I can't do it one-handed, so I'm going to have to put the camera down. Well, actually, after a bit of a fiddly start, that was relatively painless. So that is without its neck band now. I've just left that little bit of stitching there, so I know which the back is, just in case. It also could do with a really good glean. I'll get the razor on it. Puka's here. Yeah, I managed to get some of it coming in a ball, and that was the start. So yeah, yarn bath. Come on, Taylor. Come on, let's move. It's officially Christmas again in January. It could be. Um, yeah, a swap package has just arrived. Uh, from Rosie, who, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, Rosie, who is a viewer of the podcast, she sent me a message saying that um, she'd never tried self striping yarn before, and I was like, well, I cannot have that. So I had um, just dyed them up and I sent her some and she wanted to do it as a swap so I asked for fingering weight scraps for my mighty square blanket and 
She has sent me these beautifully wrapped packages, but I think the loveliest thing is that she's written on uh, what she's used everything for, which just makes everything like 10 times more special. Um, oh wow, thank you so much, Rosie. Um, wow, it's just like, I don't even know what to open first. Um, ooh, yeah, anyway. I can't really open things and film at the same time. I just wanted to see how all the lovely little bits are out of the package in there. There's all these little bits tucked in with it as well. Oh, it's just, oh, I can't get over how many. And where is Puka? There is Puka. Hello, Puka. I didn't mean to do that. <gasps> I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry, Puka. I have a helper again. Yeah, so I'm now working on this sweater. And there is board under here. And this anything I do on the floor is going to have cats involved. So I've knitted the piece, which is going to be the pocket. Um, all I did was I measured in from the side and then I measured in from the other side and I counted as many stitches. I cast on that many and then I knit up a bit and um, then I started decreasing. So hopefully the pocket should be like up a bit and then the open bit and then across. So I'm just going to pin it in place and then I'll show you. Okay, yeah, so you can see the shape of the pocket now. It was just knit straight up, and then I decreased equally at either side. So I decreased on both sides of the knit row and then did purl row, and I did three stitches in knit to give it an edging. And it's still on the needles at the top because I have a feeling I can just graft this into place here. The sides I can mattress stitch. I am not 100% sure about the bottom edge. It may just be a whip stitch. I will work on that when I get to it. But yeah, I think, sort of size-wise, I think that's okay. I shall do some sewing. It's blowing out the, um, the yarn. A lot. This is a really dark grey, but it's blowing out. You can see how if I put my hand in front of it, it looks a bit better. So yeah, I'm just much stitching up the side so it sort of hides the seam altogether then. Um and that's just done so this is front on. And all you do is you go Ooh. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that without cutting the camera top. Yeah, you take a stitch from this side and then you take a stitch from this side and it draws them together. So I'm going to do that both sides and then I'm going to do the bottom. I'm going to try and do something similar with the bottom. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm going to try. Uh, yeah, and then I'll show you I'll show you when it's finished. Um, I might show you when I get to grafting. Yeah. So I'm really pleased with how that's joined down there. And now I'm just joining the... Sorry, that's the, the end of the yarn. I'm just joining the bottom in the same way. I have a slight problem at the moment because somebody's getting involved. So she's ferreting under the jumper and every time I do a stitch she's attacking my hand. Uh, not a fun, so I need to deal with that. Still being hounded. Right, so all I've done to attach this top flap, which is still on the needle, to is to pick up stitches along the centre front. It's approximately the same amount of stitches that I have on here. Um, I haven't counted because I'm going to start here and then as long as I've got enough, It'll be fine. If I've got too many, I could just drop them off the needle. 
and then now what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to kitchener together like you would do the toe of a sock and I'm going to use the needle that's attached to the sweater as my front needle so that'll be the knit needle and then I'm going to use this as my back needle so these will be the pearl stitches on the kitchener and that should work quite nicely fingers crossed the bottom hem has worked out okay it's a little bit joggy in places but the next time it's washed i think that'll come out a bit better and i think it's fine i think it was always going to look a little bit hodgepodge along the bottom i should have picked up stitches and knit it up but um i didn't want to wrestle with a sweater and i don't think richard minds okay so this is done um i might have pulled that craft a little bit too tight but i reckon it'll loosen up with a wash and it's just sitting a bit weird because uh, this has been blocked and this hasn't. So the next time it has a wash, it will look even better. And it will also go a lot softer. The difference between that yarn when it's been blocked and when it hasn't. Incredible. But other than that, I think that, that looks okay for a pocket. Post's arrived. Oh gosh, I'm falling over. Don't kneel on a swivel chair. Lesson to self. The, this is some dyes from Siobhan's Crafts. And I ordered some of her neon colours. I can't wait to play with these. So yeah, there's five bright neon. So we've got tennis ball green. Neon yellow, lemon. I can read words. Hubba Bubba, that's a really bright pink. Yeah, and traffic cone is the orange, and electric purple is the purple, and they are all UV reactive dyes. So I can't wait to make some self striping with these. It's going to be so much fun. But that's for tomorrow. That's definitely a tomorrow job. I need to do the mending of sweaters. No, 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 Puka, no, you definitely do not play with this, no, oh dear, that was a mistake, and repackaged, so hopefully she can't get hold of it until I get to use it, gosh, who'd have a cat, so this morning's mending task is, um, I'm re-knitting the neckband on this sweater this is the august sweater i think by michelle wong it's a brooklyn tweed pattern the yarn color is blowing out it's a very sort of dark green and yeah the neckline is just very open on it, it once it blocked it just opened up ridiculously so i'm going to repick this up and re-knit it in new yarn i had some left over this is the yarn by the way drops nipple and the colorway is well, there you go yeah and um, what i think i'm going to do is once i've picked up i'm going to decrease so there should be 120 stitches i'm going to take that down to 100 and then i am going to knit the knit net the words um yeah i'm going to knit the neckline twice as long and turn it under so that it has a thickness and a stability to it that it didn't before so hopefully it won't stretch out again that's the plan anyway we'll see how i get on okay that was re relatively easy to pick up those stitches and um, because this has been worn quite a bit um the holes where the stitches were picked up were quite easy to see um so that only took a few minutes and yeah i'm doing this on slightly smaller needles than the pattern suggests but only a size i think it's just four mil and i'm doing it on 3.75 Mainly because cause this is going to be bulky enough when I'm moving it around in this neck band, and I don't really want to be fighting with my gauge as well if it's too tight. So I'd rather do it with less stitches than a reduced gauge, just for ease of actually knitting it. Yeah, so now I'm just knitting, and it's looking pretty good. Now I have company again. Puka thinks I'm sitting on her toy. Hey Pooks! Mm. 
No, you weren't digging behind me, were you? A toy is that blue thing that's on the floor over there. But apparently she thinks I'm sitting on it. Ooh, big yawn. Uh, so it's about an hour later and I'm probably about halfway there with this. And you can see the difference just on the bit that I've knit and the bit that's been worn, how this um, is floofing up slightly. I'm going to give it a good clean when I've finished this, get rid of all those bobbles. But this was a jumper that was always made to be worn. It's a gardening jumper. It's a green cabled jumper. Um, yeah. So I don't mind the fact that it's pilling in places. It's not actually pilling, it's just floofing slightly. Um, yeah, because I'm talking, Puka has brought me her toy. I am debating whether just to bind this off and leave this longer neckband as the neckband rather than turning it over. It was so open before that even with a longer neckband it's not going to look like a mock turtle neck or anything like that. It's not going to be like a polo neck type thing. I think it's just going to pull it in, but I don't know. I have taken this off um, the needles and put it on some some yarn just to see how this neckline is looking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a um, picture of how it looked before and this is the same hanger so you can see how low it hung on that hanger. Um, I was knitting this long to fold it over but actually I'm thinking I should probably just leave it like that. I think that looks better. If I hang it, if I fold it over it's going to bring it down to the same sort of level it was before. So yeah, I think I'm just going to put it back on the needles and bind off at that. I think that looks better. Yeah, so this is how I um, bind off. Um, you are going to go into the stitch as if to knit and take that stitch off. Then you're going to go into the next two stitches as if to purl and pull that yarn through. So it's just a one step process. So in as if to knit and off, in two as if to purl and pull the yarn through. And it gives you this really neat bind off that sort of mimics um, long tail cast on, but it's actually quite stretchy. So it's great for cuffs on socks and um, net bands and cuffs and things like that. Pretty much anything where you're finishing on a rib it gives a really nice finish too. So I'll just quickly show it again. Knit one stitch off, go into two stitches as if to purl, and pull the yarn through. Knit one stitch off, into two. Okay. They're probably very bad put out camera angle, but there you go.
I believe, a bit of a deep hill. There are still some hills. Usually what I'll do with a band like this at the end is just run scissors along it. To get rid of any extra ones, but to be honest, this is going to be worn mainly outside. It's definitely a gardening sweater. But yeah, I'm pleased with that. It looks a lot better. Now I'm going to go play some Zelda. So yeah, those are the sweaters I was working on. There's probably some kitten shenanigans scattered in that footage as well. Um, yeah, I was really pleased with how they turned out. Um, I was completely winging it when it came to that pocket, but yeah, I was really pleased. Um, and sort of went a few ways with how I was going to do that neckline, but it worked out in the end. Now, because it's Monday and I'm working, uh, so I'm going to be crocheting. I can't really show you what project I'm working on at the moment. It is a magazine that might not come to fruition, but we're putting a proposal together. But, um, so yeah, I can't really show you what I'm working on, but that doesn't mean I can't show you some crochet. So I'll do a bit of a close up on what I'm working on in a moment. Most amigurumi starts off like this with a most patterns say to start with a magic loop I don't do that I change ch chain two and then do my first set of stitches in that second chain from the hook works exactly the same as a magic loop um, and yeah you can tighten and loosen it the same way exactly and then I've just increased those six stitches to 12 and on my pattern I've just written out the first part of what I'm going to do so I'm just going to be increasing by six stitches until I get to 30 stitches and that's pretty much just a standard if you're going to be making any sort of round thing you start off by increasing by six stitches and that gives you the like the top part of the head because um, if you've got six, six stitches and you increase by six stitches the circle you make is going to be flat if you want to then come around these sides you need to increase by less stitches so that's usually why you'll find a pan that starts off getting you to 30 by increasing by six and then it will slow those increases. Some patterns will not do that um, and those patterns usually rely a lot on you getting shape through stuffing and yeah not my favourite patterns but yes. Because crochet stitch is quite a lot is more of a structured stitch than a knit stitch it includes more um, yarn in it so I think there's a lot that we can do in the pattern that um, means you're not having to fuff about with it so much when it comes to stuffing it should just be that you stuff it to its fullness and it looks how the designer wants it to look um, we could get onto the fact that people unstuff everybody understuffs it's just one of those things that happens if I all the like amigurumi tips that I tell people it's like yeah you need twice the amount of stuff in that oh we got a pooks hey pooks you on a sofa
reckon the chance of me getting that pen back. beautiful day outside. It's cold and blue. It's far too exciting. There was somebody up a cherry picker doing something to a tree. So that's why Carl keeps getting distracted by the um, window. I didn't mean to turn the camera on on then but um i mean you can see what i was talking about before about this causing its own shape in a way um the pattern forming the shape for you this is just sat on the desk and it's curled up exactly how i want it to be it's not even stuffed and it's not even what well, can't be stuffed it's pretty much just a dish at the moment but my thing with my patterns is that in a way they shouldn't even if they're not stuffed the, the shape is there I don't know how much sense I'm making with that, but I'm about to change colour anyway, so I'm not going to do anything fancy when changing colour. It won't be seen. This is the top of a head. We're covered in hair. Um, yeah, so I'm not just going to literally join in the next colour. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I will do a crochet hints and tips video at some point to show you how to do an invisible join for changing colour, but not today. Got another visitor. We've got a cat in each window. Pooka? This curtain is closed because that sun just comes right in and blinds me. Hey Pooks! And then there's Cal. Look at the blue sky! One of the best things about working up here, all I can see pretty much is trees and sky. Maybe in the centre of a city, but I can live with that view. And view of Cal, of course. Cal, Cal. Hey, darling. Yeah. That is about as far as I can go before lunch. I'm just going to put the eyes in. And, uh, yeah. So... That's not going to come unraveled. That can go down. That needs to go back in that box there. Otherwise Puka will steal it. And I'm just going to put these eyes in. So are you in the best position to see this? Let's try and do it this way. So I've marked where one is going to go. And I have the eyes ready here. These safety eyes are the best things to use because they do fit really well if you make them put them in while you're making them so that marker can come out and then all I'm gonna do is count the holes between the stitches so in this case I want them to be 13 in between so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 13 the pattern should say where you want them to be, how far apart, whatnot. And that's, I think, a quite an important thing in the design of Amigurumi is the placement of the eyes. I don't know if I've picked the right backs for these, I might not have them. Nope, I haven't got the right backs. There we go. That is, that is really difficult to show. That's what a little bat looks like. It's a little washer. It's not going to focus on me. No, won't focus on it. But yeah, you can see there's a post in the back there. The washer goes on and we just push it down. 
and that's pretty securely in place. Suki looks rather cute already, doesn't she? I think that's probably about as much as I can show you of this pattern. I don't think you'll be able to guess who she's going to be, but yeah, I think that's about the most I can show you. And it's lunchtime anyway, so I'm going to go have some lunch and I'll be, I'll be back up here for the rest of the day after that but yeah I'm gonna go have some lunch and do some knitting because I cast on some socks that I really want to work on but oh it's nice being here yeah that is why I enjoy being in my studio when it's blue skies outside that's all I see we're we going downstairs Cal You're a bit sun drunk. You've been in the sunshine, haven't you? No, I don't know where Pooks is. <laughs> well, sun drunk kitty. Yeah, so I managed to do a little bit on my February rainbow chronicle socks for during my lunch break uh, gotta go back to work in a mo yeah i don't know why i'm showing you here they on it's so red on the screen though it's really weird see it's this slip stitch design on the front and then on the back it's a little cable design and slip stitches I'm not 100% happy with this. It is it's one pass cables, and so I was doing them the way without a cable needle here, and I don't think it looks very nice. So I moved to doing them with a cable needle, and they do look better. But it's kind of an odd cable pattern. Because it, it feels like it's trying to get the look of just a twisted stitch, which is pretty much what it's doing. There's somebody at the door. Cal, who's at the door? Yeah. So yeah, you can see where I changed these two here, where I changed using a proper cable needle. Interesting the difference it makes. I think I need to try a pattern with the one pass cables that actually moves the cables in the way I expect them to move and see if it works with um, without a cable needle the same way. I'm sure it does, I know I've done it before, but not in this. It's pretty though. The yarn's pretty. It's so bright on the screen, it's not as bright as that in real life. Yeah, it's really pretty. Sun is setting. It's a bit difficult to work in here now because that sun is just blaring straight through this window. And if I close the curtain, it gets too dark. So it looks like it's time to give up for today. Still got a couple of hours of work that I probably should do, so I'll probably do some pattern work on the computer downstairs. Not very exciting to film. But I just thought I'd show you the sun. I have finished work and sat down and Puka has instantly come and sit, sat on my knee because she's that type of cat um, and I am technically her living cushion so if I sit down she comes and sits on me she doesn't really like it if I stroke her she gets a bit annoyed about that she's just one of those cats that just likes to sit on your knee as long as she's not fiddled with um, and I've cast on another sock I haven't got very far with it. I haven't been sat down very long. Um, but yeah, I felt like I needed another vanilla, vanilla sock on the needle. And um, I feel like I need to get some knitted for mum. Because the more socks I'm knitting for myself, the less socks she's going to get. And she likes... She, I think she 
only wears hand-knit socks, so she moans when she starts to run low. She's got, she has sort of worn through a few pairs that I've knit her, but I don't mind, as long as they're getting worn. Um, but yeah, this is a ball of opal yarn. Um, do I have the details for it? I do. Here we go. So, whoop. That apparently is what it's going to look like. And those are the numbers. And I actually bought this for the harvest cardigan that I'm making for mum. But I thought it'd be quite fun when I give her her cardigan to give her some socks with the leftover yarn as well. And I've already started one. I've done one, but not... I've done one. So I've done this one and um, I've cast on the second sock for this one but I thought I'd cast on another one as well because I know what this one knits up like now and this one is a mystery apart from what you see on the ball band. But yeah, toe up, short row heel. That didn't work out so well this time on that corner. And sewn bind off, which is really stretchy. Stretchy, stretchy, stretchy. Well, I sound knackered. So, I probably won't record anything more today, unless the cats do something ridiculously silly. Um, and I'll record a little bit more tomorrow, and then I'll edit all this together and post it up later in the week. But yeah, a bit more knitting tonight. <laughs>